Hello and welcome to the latest edition of WVU Medicine Tuesday Talks. I'm your host, Marissa Sayre. May is Stroke Awareness Month. Stroke is the second leading cause of death worldwide and the leading cause of disability. How can you tell if someone is having a stroke and what can you do to prevent one? We'll talk about all of that and more today with Dr. Muhammad Alvi, Medical Director of the WVU Stroke Center. Welcome Dr. Alvi to Tuesday Talks. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Marissa. Thank you for having me. Of course, so let's get right into it. What exactly is a stroke? So stroke is basically damage to the brain um, as a result of disruption in blood flow. Uh, Stroke can be divided into two different branches, which is a blockage kind of stroke, which is ischemic stroke, and bleeding kind of stroke, which is a hemorrhagic stroke. Vast majority of strokes, when we talk about strokes, are blockage kind of strokes, ischemic stroke, so which results as a blockage in blood vessel feeding the brain. And once the brain does not get blood flow, nutrients, oxygen, the brain gets damaged, and that's what a stroke is. As a result, uh, depending on what part of the brain is affected, you get different symptoms from stroke. Now, a lot of times when you hear about strokes, you hear about the phrase, time is brain. What exactly does that mean? Right, so in, in case of a stroke, uh, things are very time dependent. Longer the blockage persists, there is more damage to the brain. Uh, up to a certain point, brain can compensate um, with the decreased blood flow, so our goal is to get the patient to the hospital in the right amount of time where we can potentially open up the blockages, reverse the damage to the brain, and preserve brain before it, it gets damaged more uh, in permanently. Now, what are some of the symptoms that people may see? Yeah, so common symptoms of stroke uh, usually result in some speech difficulties, so it could be slurred speech or it could be inability to speak, um, facial droop, so face weakness, uh, weakness in arm or leg, uh, similarly numbness uh, in one side of the body. Usually the symptoms are unilateral, meaning one side of the body is affected. Uh, some of the less common symptoms of stroke may include uh, problems with balance, problems with vision, uh, difficulty walking, problems with coordination, so those kind of things. Now, there's an easy way to remember those symptoms. Um, I believe it's called FAST? That's correct. So FAST is an uh, easy way to remember. It's uh, for public education. We use that all the time. So basically, fa FAST, uh, F stands for the face, so facial droop. Uh, a is for arm weakness. So and then S is for the speech. So any combination of these symptoms or even isolated facial droop symptoms or speech symptoms, um, that's all concerning. T stands for time to call 911. So any of those symptoms, that's a time to call 911 and you gotta get to the hospital. Uh, sometimes we use uh, B fast, B E fast, uh, and then the, that includes B for balance and E for eye symptoms, so vision loss or double vision, those kind of things. That is a more inclusive way of remembering stroke symptoms. Absolutely. Now, if you think that someone you're with is having a stroke or yourself, if you think you're having a stroke, um, what should people do? Yeah. So if you can get help, um, you call 911 um, and you got to get to the hospital because you do need imaging to figure out if it's a blockage kind of stroke or a bleeding kind of stroke. That cannot happen outside of the hospital. Uh, the initial treatments, which may include clot buster medications, other interventions, procedures, cannot be done outside the hospital. So the key is getting to the hospital as soon as possible. Um, and it's not one of those things that you want to delay too much. Sometimes people want to wait, they want to sleep off their symptoms and see how things evolve. Uh, but if, if we are dealing with stroke, you're concerned these are stroke symptoms, that's a 911 call. Mm -hmm. Time is very important. Correct. Now, what are some of the, the treatments that we offer here at WV Medicine for stroke? Yeah, so um, we have an advanced comprehensive stroke center. We take care of all simple to the most advanced and complex strokes. Um, when we talk about 
blockage kind of strokes, ischemic strokes. Uh, we use the clot buster medications like alteplase, also called TPA, or tenecteplase called uh, TNK. These are strong clot busters with the goal of breaking up the clot, resuming blood flow to the brain. Uh, that's standard of care, and we use it uh, frequently in stroke patients. Sometimes if the blockage is much bigger in the bigger blood vessels of the brain, uh, we go after the clot uh, surgically with catheters and try to open up the blood vessels th in, in that way. Uh, so those are common uh, interventions in a acute emergent settings, which happens in the emergency room. Uh, in the blockage kind of, uh, in the bleeding kind of stroke, the other kind of stroke, there are other kind of interventions. But overall, that's a less common kind of stroke. Uh, but we take care of those strokes also. Now, for, for people at home watching, um, what are some tips that people can do to help prevent a stroke? Yeah. So, vast majority of strokes are preventable. And uh, the risk factors behind stroke that increases the chances of future stroke are very similar to uh, same risk factors as the cardiac heart disease. Um, for example, the, the biggest risk factor is high blood pressure. Um, if that's well controlled, the risk of stroke down the road is much, much, much lower. Uh, perhaps this is the biggest intervention against future strokes uh, and the biggest risk factors for stroke. Uh, after that comes high blood sugar, so diabetes, poorly controlled diabetes, uh, smoking, high cholesterol, uh, decreased activity, physical activity, some diet. So those are modifiable risk factors that we have some control over. Uh, then there are the non-modifiable risk factors that we really don't control a whole lot, like our age or genetics, uh, family history. Uh, but the other things definitely we focus on, blood pressure, blood sugar, cholesterol, quit smoking. Um, those are the big ones, the big four, uh, when it comes to preventing strokes. So your yearly checkups are important for a variety of reasons. Correct. Definitely correct. for stroke prevention. That's correct. And if anyone has any questions at home for Dr. Alvi, make sure to send them in, comment below, and, and we'll answer them here. But let's talk about what is the most important thing for anyone watching at home um, to take away, and, or you want our viewers to know about stroke? Yeah. So uh, important things, some of them we have discussed. So recognizing stroke signs and symptoms, very important. Uh, so those were the weakness in one side of the body, facial weakness, uh, speech difficulties, um, recognizing if you see someone having those symptoms, that's all, that's concerning, that's time to get help. Uh, because there are good treatment treatments available. Uh, and you can get to your closest hospital. Uh, we at WB Medicine provide stroke coverage to uh, 30 plus hospitals in the region um, where the hospitals in the emergency rooms are at these outside hospitals, they call us, we evaluate the patients via video, help them with their decisions, treatment decisions, help them get the patient here for further treatments. Uh, so the goal is recognize the symptoms in a timely manner and get to the hospital. Uh, and then uh, prevention part, we talked about that, uh, a big number of strokes are preventable if we take care of our health and underlying risk factors. Absolutely. And now we're actually getting a question in now. So uh, we have a viewer who wants to know, if you have nerve damage from a stroke, um, can you reverse that? Uh, so far, we in the research world have not been able to reverse the damage done by stroke. Um, brain tissue has very limited ability to heal and recover as compared to, let's say, skin tissue, which heals and recovers. Brain is not as good as healing and recovering. Uh, there are, there is some amount of healing and recovering that happens in the brain after a stroke. Uh, there are certain other research protocols and treatments that we also are part of that we try to kind of rejuvenate the brain or 
make it more active. Um, so some of those we do here at, uh, at RNI, like the uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are not there when it comes to the science uh, where we can undo or reverse the damage to the brain cells or nerve cells from the stroke. So we are not there yet. Hopefully soon. Yeah. yeah. Especially with the crew with the RNI, there's no doubt in my mind in a few years we'll probably be having this interview. Um, so before we, before we um, call it a day, is there anything else you wanted the viewers to know or to talk about when, in regards to stroke? Yeah. Um, another thing to keep in mind, uh, once you've had a stroke, it's, it can be a life-changing experience for a lot of people. Um, there are challenges that come with that, and some of that may include uh, basic stuff like weakness and numbness and difficulty walking, difficulty with speech, difficulty swallowing. Uh, and we have good uh, programs with therapists, and we work on those things. Uh, and we can get people better significantly and improve their life. On the other hand, there are other challenges that may come with stroke that are less obvious. For example, post-stroke depression or post-stroke cognitive impairment, meaning memory changes as a result of that. So, so those are less obvious, more subtle, um, and th but equally important when it comes to the patient and their life experiences. So those are, again, things that we focus on. We help them with those symptoms. Um, so people dealing with consequences of stroke uh, or living with stroke, we, they still have chances to improve and recover. So we work with them on that stuff. So your team treats both the emotional and the physical Correct. changes from the stroke. Correct. Now, how about caregivers? I know when, when a family member experiences something as traumatic as a stroke, um, what are some services that maybe we offer to treat um, the family who's taking care of someone who suffered a stroke? Yeah. Um, just like stroke can be a life-changing experience for the patient, that's, that's the same case for the family members. Um, it, it, it can be pretty destructive to the family life. Um, we have excellent support groups, uh, which includes both the patient and family members. Um, we meet here once a month in Morgantown, in person, and there's an ability to join via Zoom virtually. Uh, so patients struggling with consequences of stroke or their family members adjusting to the new life, uh, they can connect face-to-face, one-on-one with patients who, have, who are, have had stroke and now they're recovering from stroke. Uh, we have four or five volunteers who come to the hospital on a regular basis. Um, these are people who have had strokes and different kinds of strokes with different consequences from the stroke. They come and meet patients and their family members and give them a patient's perspective rather than a doctor's or nurse's perspective uh, that this is what you're going to be dealing with. This is how you look at things. Uh, very valuable for patients and their families. Mm -hmm. I've seen firsthand your team treats everyone who walks in the door with just the utmost compassion. It's, it's incredible. Well, thank you for your time. Was there anything else you wanted to add? Um, no, I think that's good. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Alvi. I appreciate it. Well, that brings us to the end of this edition of Tuesday Talks. If you're looking for more information about stroke, visit wvumedicine.org slash stroke. I'm Marissa Sayer, and on behalf of Dr. Alvi and everyone at WVU Medicine, thanks for joining us. Have a great day.